Hi everyone, in this video I will give a quick introduction to artificial neural network and see how it can be used to value options. The valuation and the risk management of options can be quickly complex. It depends on the options features and the choice of the pricing model. There is often no closed form solution for the pricing of the derivatives and it involves multiple dimensions. When no closed form solution is available, numerical approximations can be used to price options, such as binomial or trinomial trees, finite difference methods, Monte Carlo simulation, and so on. Such algorithms can be very time consuming in some cases, which can be problematic, particularly when we need to run many simulations on large portfolios. Here we analyze an alternative method using artificial neural network to price options. An artificial neural network is a computational system inspired by the biological neural network found in animal brains. It consists of a collection of interconnected nodes, called neurons, which are organized in two layers. The neurons in each layer receive weighted inputs, process them through an activation function, and then pass the results to the neurons in the next layer. The rectified linear activation function, or ReLU, is a piecewise linear function that will output the input if it is positive and output zero otherwise. It is widely used as a default activation function in neural networks due to its ability to facilitate easier training and often yielding good performance. The neurons in the input layer receive input signals from the external environment while the neurons in the output layer produce the output of the model. Hidden layers are intermediate layers between input and output ones. The connections between neurons are weighted, which means that some inputs have a stronger influence on the output of the neurons than others. These weights are adjusted during the training to improve the performance of the network for a specific objective. Here is an example of multiple layer perceptron with three neurons in the input layer, two hidden layers, each of them having four neurons, and one neuron in the output layer. Artificial neural network is an example of supervised learning algorithm in machine learning. It can be used for both classification or regression. Here we want to use it to approximate a function. We know the true function f, which will return the true output y from the input x, and we want to approximate it with the artificial neural network. From the input x, it will return a predictive output that we can compare to the true value. In order to fit the model, we will define a training dataset where the model will learn using a loss function in order to measure the difference between the estimation from the model and the true value. And we want to minimize this loss function. The mean squared error MSE is an example of loss function. We use here the ADAM algorithm, ADAM for Adaptative Moment Estimation, to minimize the loss function. It is a popular algorithm used in deep learning and particularly for training neural networks. It is an extension of the Stochastic Gradient Descent Optimization algorithm. Two important inputs in the algorithm are the epoch and the batch size. They are both related to how the model learns from the data and they have to be chosen carefully. The batch size is the number of training examples used in one iteration of the optimization algorithm. If the batch size is set to 16, for example, the model will take 16 data points at a time and update the weights of the model based on the average loss of those 16 samples. A large batch size leads to a more stable training process but requires more memory to process. They are in general chosen to be a power of 2 as CPU and GPU memory architectures are organized in powers of two and it can be faster and more efficient to do so. An epoch corresponds to the number of times the algorithm sees the entire training dataset. For example, if we have 750 data points in our training dataset and a batch size of 16, then one epoch would involve 47 iterations. Training more epochs can improve the accuracy of the model but it can also lead to overfitting, so it is important to find a good balance. We will train a neural network to estimate a parabolic function. For that, we will build the artificial neural network with Keras framework in Python. 
First, we import the libraries that will be used, and you can see on the right side the function that we want to estimate. We use values between minus 10 and plus 10 for x in the dataset. And we split the dataset between the training and the test datasets with a split of 75% for the training and 25% for the test. Then we build an artificial neural network with 4 layers and 10 neurons in each of them. We use the mean squared error for the loss function and the ADAM algorithm to minimize it. We fit the model on the training dataset using a batch size equal to 16 and 150 epochs. If we compare on the test dataset the real values with their estimations, we see that we get a very strong relationship. However, the efficiency of the model is more limited when we want to extrapolate the curve. As highlighted on the chart on the right, when using input data out of the initial range between minus 10 and plus 10, the model tends to underestimate the real value of the function. Other neural networks or different parameters could potentially improve the model. Let's see now if the artificial neural network works well to estimate the Black-Scholes formula. We know the price of a European call option in the Black-Scholes model, it is given by the following closed form solution. The option price is a function of five variables, the asset price S, the strike price K, the time to maturity capital T minus T, the volatility sigma, and the risk-free interest rate. As the option price is linear homogeneous in S and K, it can be reduced to four variables fixing S at 100, for example. We define the option prices of European call and put options in the Black-Scholes framework, and we create a dataset to train the model with a large number of values for the four variables and the corresponding European call option prices. Again, we split the dataset between training and test. Similarly to what we have done before, we create and we fit the neural network on the training dataset. We use, again, a neural network with four layers, 10 neurons in each. The input dimension is now four. We use the same batch size and number of epochs as in the previous example. Of course, the training takes more time compared to the previous simple example, as the training dataset is bigger, the function being more complex with four variables instead of one. As highlighted on the chart on the right, we still get good results when comparing estimated and real values in the test dataset. We compare now the price of a call option when changing the asset price with a strike price at 120, a time to maturity equal to 6 months, a risk-free interest rate fixed at 5% and a volatility at 30%. Even if we obtain good approximation of the prices, we see on the chart that the estimation of the Greeks may be more unstable, which can be an issue, of course. Moreover, we see on the left side of the chart that the model price of the call option increases when the asset price decreases, which is a violation of the call spread arbitrage condition. Indeed, nothing guarantees that the no arbitrage conditions, such as the cold spread, butterfly spread, or calendar spread, are not violated when we build the neural network. So it may be required to use additional regularization techniques or constraints. If you are interested in further reading, you will find many academic articles on the topic. This one proposes a review of the literature on neural network for option pricing and hedging. Thank you for your time.